We're talking here about how you can spot bad investments. That's really what this session is about. How you can figure out where something is going wrong. Now, I've been known to go into big conferences where they have exhibit halls and be walking around and somebody says, what are you doing? And I said, when I wrote Stupid Investment of the Week for 10 years, I would say I'm looking for a stupid investment. And they said, how can you find a stupid investment in this room full of things? And I said, well, it's pretty easy. They said, what do you mean? I said, you keep walking till you smell it, and then you go a little more slowly till you step in it, and eventually you realize what you've done, because stupid investments are bad. Now, I've been here for a couple of days. I think I've found one in your country. So we're going to have a little fun, and we're going to see, but you're going to have to help me, because you may remember, I speak no Ukrainian. Okay, not kidding, we're going to do this in real time. If I'm wrong, we'll see. But this would have raised my interest when I was writing Stupid Investment of the Week. So let me explain to you what was happening. Last night, I got back to my hotel room. I was awake for a little bit. I went and I checked one of my favorite websites. It's a website all about sports at the University of Michigan. My wife went to the University of Michigan. I went to the University of Michigan. My father-in-law, my mother-in-law, etc. Michigan, big university in the United States, fabulous football team, etc. And there was a bunch of things going on this weekend. I wanted to check in on Michigan sports this weekend. Okay, so I went to my favorite website for Michigan sports. Then I went away from it for a second, and then I went back to it. When I reopened it the second time, there was a funny thing off in the middle of the page. It was an ad that I could not read. It was in Ukrainian. Right? In the middle of Michigan sports, all written in English for me, one ad in Ukrainian. So I got here today, and at lunch I went and set up my computer. I had Natalia come over, and I said, could you tell me what this says? Because I think I've got a pretty good idea. She said, how could you know you don't read Ukrainian? I said, stupid investments come in every language. And this had the numbers... $100, $7,000, and $40,000, and everything else was in Ukrainian. Now, how would this ad have gotten on my computer? Well, on my computer, I spend a lot of time going to financial websites, web browsers and things that collect information about who goes to those sites, take a look, and they help people direct ads back to folks that might be interested, right? And the Michigan website, well, it's very common for me to go, like, say, to Morningstar.com that we talked about earlier. I'll go to Morningstar.com, and then later I'll go check my favorite Michigan website, and suddenly I'll have a Morningstar ad, even though I don't need to be sold anything from Morningstar. So the ad, when I clicked, brought me to a site called i4x.com slash ru. That's this. Okay? Now, unfortunately, right in the middle of this site, if I can make this, where this was, was a little something that as Natalia translated it for me, and it's not here, sadly, in this version, because again, it's always based on what somebody clicked on, said, how could you take $100 and trade for 40000 and if you clicked, now in this case, it's offering to register me in English, which is ironic. On my own computer, it was offering to register for me in Ukrainian, which was particularly interesting because I don't speak it, uh, etc. It's not actually giving me any information. It's just telling me I can trade. Now, let's make an assumption here. They are not putting their ads or their site in Ukrainian for my benefit. They're doing it for somebody else's. And if they're talking about trading now with 100 euros, which I assume, by the way, is roughly what I'll find if I come back here, right? This is trade now for $100. I, I am right, aren't I? Okay, good, because I'm, you know. So we're basically looking at the same sorts of things. Now, 
Does it mean it's a scam? Absolutely not. Does it mean you could lose all your money? Well, yeah, if you want to lose all your money, make a few bad Forex trades pretty quick, you could lose a lot of money. For the average investor, no. Now, for you guys who are asking, should I invest or what would I do? Again, you want to talk about a hell of a story? Well, if you can get your publishers to front you a hundred bucks, you should go try to see what, tell the story first person. Hey, I saw the ad, they were pitching it. I know nothing about Forex trading, because do any of you know anything about trading foreign currencies? Not really, right? By the way, I know very little about trading foreign currencies with one exception. I know plenty of people who can lose a lot of money trading foreign currencies. So you're looking for a story and you're trying to figure it out. Do, can you make money trading foreign currencies? Yes, absolutely. Can you make a lot of money? Sure, if you're a very good trader. You know absolutely nothing. And the chances are that, yeah, for 100 bucks, we can give you leverage and access to other things. And I will be willing to bet you that if you put up 100, I'll be willing to bet you that uh, I'll, I'll put $10 of my own for any of you that wind up writing this, that you turn 100 into zero faster than you turn 100 into 200. Fair bet, right? I mean, all you got to do is have confidence in yourself. So when you take a look at it, here's the thing. This was pitched on my Michigan sports website. That's about as average guy as you can get. What would be the equivalent here in Ukraine? Some sort of a website for the national soccer team? Or some sort of a website for your favorite soccer club? Something along, you know. Okay. <laughs> if you, yeah, maybe, maybe not. But the answer is, this comes from somebody who's searching for money. And that's the important thing to recognize. We've talked a lot about human nature, how it plays out, that fear and greed thing. If you want to understand how it's pitched and how it's targeted at you, all you need to do in the internet world, show some interest in finance. Right? Interest in finance. All I did was, Interest in finance, stopped at Morningstar, went back to a website that allows local stuff, and oh, by the way, I'd been in Ukraine. That's all it needed to then target me with an ad. That's it, right? And I don't speak the language. By the way, the language of foreign currency, if I, in foreign exchange trading, I don't speak that language really too well either. Even when it's English, I understand what they're saying, but it's that complicated. Now you then get somebody who's had enough interest to go looking for money or looking for financial education or whatever it is. You put them in a situation where you give them a, a slick sales pitch, and now maybe they're doing something that's bad. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you a couple of things. First, and I'll give one to... I'll tell you what, can I get each of you just one to this table and one to that table so that we're evened up with fours just for the purposes here because of what they've given me? I'm going to give you one for the table. And actually, and I will give up, this is, I will give up my original copy. And I will tell you the story that goes behind this particular sales pitch. Which one is first? This one is the one I got first. I think it's actually not the one that you have a copy of. Now, this is an oil tech game changer. That's what this guy is talking about. And I'm sure you all know where Albania is, because while this stock is traded in the United States, what they say they are doing with this company is creating a process that will change oil in terms of how it is processed and will allow you to get from heavy oil through the process faster. And it's going to start with a plant in Albania. And this is, however, a stock registered in the United States. It is also a penny stock. And I want you to go back to the first page for just a second. On the cover, there's a picture of that guy there, right? 
His name is Tobin Smith. Toby Smith appears on Fox Business for, well, we'll get, for a long time, Toby Smith has appeared on Fox Business on a show called Bulls and Bears. And Toby Smith is an expert who goes on television and talks about stocks and the market and everything else. So people in our country were seeing that, and they were pretty interested because Toby's a smart guy talking about stocks. But Toby, when he's on the show, doesn't talk about stocks that are this small. Toby talks about large stocks. Now, in this particular pitch, Toby doesn't say anything other than, if you notice, it does say one thing about Fox, right? Just the one little line on this one that uh, on the back here it says... Tobin Smith, Fox News, on the back of that one it says Fox Contributor, right? On Bulls and Bears on the back. Here's the thing. You're not going to see one bad word in that sales pitch. Do you think Toby Smith wrote it? Why not? His picture's on it. It's his newsletter. It's the next big thing investor. It's his brand new newsletter. Well, but he writes, he gives anal analysis on stocks all the time. You can find him on television every single week, pretty much every day, giving analysis on stocks. Big brand name stocks, Coca-Cola, whatever. He'll tell you, it says in there that he wrote it. Oh, yeah. It says it in the fine print. You know what it also says? It also says, if you know where to look in there, that Tobin Smith was paid $50,000 to write that. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think, if I gave you $50,000, that your opinion of my stock might not be quite so good? Possibly not. Let me see if I can find for you while we're talking here. What became of this? See, we have a problem in our country with something called sponsored research. And sponsored research, you know what, I'm finding this the slow way. Sponsored research is a problem because it's not independent. And as a journalist, we're supposed to be objective. Let's see if we come up with this quickly enough. This is the story that came out of that particular piece. It is a column, uh, sorry, that basically says that Toby Smith was paid $50,000. By the way, Fox Business fired Toby Smith 30 minutes after my column appeared. But he'd been doing it for about two years. So as much as people go, oh, it's great, you got a scoop on Toby Smith. No, I just was writing about sponsored research. And it happens that Toby Smith was in the middle of it. Now here's the thing. Penny stock investing, which is literally investing in stocks that cost very little money, you can make money doing it. But in our market, it's the most rigged, most dangerous, most high risk. Now, people will tell you all the time, yes, but I'm only risking little bits of money. I can buy 100 shares for $5 because it trades for $0.05 cents a share. And all it has to do is go to $0.06, cents, and I've made 20%. Yeah, that's true. Except for the fact that you're not going to be able to buy in for $5. You're going to have to buy in for $100. And yes, it's going to have to go from 5 to 6 And that's, but it only is a penny. It's 20%. No stock gains 20% easily, right, as a general rule. So it's a place where you go, okay, we've got all these problems. Now, here's what I want to do. You've seen one, and you know it's a scam. 
You know it's a scam because I told you it's a scam. But I will tell you a couple of things that if you look through that, you won't find out. See, it tells you all about in that particular one, all about the things that are going on in that stock. What it doesn't tell you is that that company has no revenues. Zero. So it's telling you all these great things that are going to happen. Yes? It's in there. Yeah. It's right in there. Go in from the back. Start in the back because the back is the footnotes. Look for the fine print. And you'll see a thing that's a disclaimer. Go one more. You're going to have to go a little further. Go on the print out here. Right there. So it's the small print about two pages in. Can I, can I have that for just a second? So here's what we're looking at. We're looking at this one. See the small print? Yeah. Small print. It's very tiny print. And here's what it says. NBT Special Research Report. That's this. A Change Wave Incorporated. That's Change Wave is his company. DBA NBT Communications does not purport to provide an analysis of any company's financial situation position, operations, or prospects. And this is not to be construed as a recommendation by NBT, that's the publisher of this, or an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any security. Beaumont Media LLC has used outside research and writers to provide information to create the advertisement, now you know it's an advertisement, coming from NBT about Petrosonic Energy, that's the company that we're talking about here. Although the information contained in this advertisement is believed to be reliable, NBT, that's Tobin Smith, and Beaumont Media make no warranties as to the accuracy of any of the content herein. Well, you keep reading, because you've got to go a lot further, and you'll come, in with, come out with, Beaumont Media has received or expects to receive and manage a total production budget of $3,500,000 from Belmont Group. That's the company that's now promoting the stock, okay, for this online advertising effort and will retain any amounts over and above the cost of production, copywriting services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Change Wave, the guy who runs this, doing business as NBT Communications, is paid 50000 as an editorial fee. And there is how Tobin Smith made $50,000. And oh, by the way, it's this far down the disclaimer. Okay? When we talk about the devil being buried in the details, that's Satan. But you have to know where to look. Okay? Well, he had to write it. He, he had to say, if he hadn't done this, he'd be going to jail. If he hadn't written this, this disclaimer makes all of this, which in America we affectionately refer to as bullshit, it makes all the bullshit legal. That's how you wash it, and that's in a regulated market. Okay? Take away, take a look at what you are looking at and consider. Without that disclaimer, you will not find anything. Now, mind you, you can go to Petrosonic. We have the Securities and Exchange Commission. You can find any documents you want. And in fact, in five minutes, you're going to be looking at an SEC document. Petrosonic has something in its file known as a going concern letter. A going concern letter is an independent accountant has looked at the business and they have a question as to whether or not this will be a going concern. In other words, based on what it's got right now, can it survive? Now the funny side is, Fox is owned by News Corp. And News Corp owns Dow Jones. Dow Jones owns MarketWatch. So 
we spent a lot of time dealing with our own attorneys on this, making sure that what I said wouldn't say get me fired or send me to trouble. And in doing it, we wound up with plenty of information we had to leave out, etc. But at one point, one of the lawyers said, well, how can you make the statement that their financial statement is terrible? I said, that's easy. When you have never sold anything, when your revenues are zero, you're losing money. You're losing money fast, right? Very simple. Maybe your system, what you're doing, is going to make money. But it's not making money right now. And if you don't have enough money to keep you going till you can generate profits, sorry, you lose. Correct? The best idea in the world. If you don't have enough money to turn it into a profit, you're dead. So here's this thing. It sounds great. And maybe it works. Maybe it winds up not being a scam. And Petrasonic, which apparently now has gotten approval, now after this whole thing, to open the plant in Albania, which means that next year it may have some revenues. Maybe it's not a, a total ripoff, but when you have to analyze its financial condition, it's a problem. So here's what I'd like you to do. This is another one of these. These come to me because I'm an investor. They come in the mail because that's how these folks send these things. I'm on these lists because I go to websites. The same way I go to my website and I get something here that says, in Ukrainian, Fordex, you can make money. I get one of these. I'd like you to take a look at this and tell me if this guy is okay. If somebody wants an extra copy, I do happen to have one if you guys would like to see in the back. And then, I'm going to give you one other thing. And this other thing, I hope, will teach you one lesson. Now, you see that little report there? That was put out by somebody. Before you get too far into it, I want you to know what this is. This is the company's, the company's financial report. This is Nordstra Energy's Form 10K. And in our country... You have to basically, if you're a public company, file data every quarter and every year. So this is their most recent report. It basically ends in the middle of June. And in it, you have to say how much you're making, what's going on, etc. Your auditors, they're in here. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Now I recognize that English is a problem for you, but I want to see if in a minute or two you can figure out whether or not this particular stock has anything in it that would make you say, oh yeah, this one, it's the real one. Here you go. This is their SEC report. And by the way, this is what we consider this progress. The SEC report is about 150 pages of worthless crap and about five pages of stuff that you might want to know. <laughs> Which pages? Okay. Pages that tell you about auditor's reports. Pages that tell you about net income. Pages that tell you about revenues. Start with those. So what you've got is a company that's making a very basic pitch. You all understand the pitch for oil. It's a huge pitch for you guys, right? And we're talking in this case about America's energy independence. The irony of it being that America's getting energy independent whether this happens or not. And it's talking all about a soon to be released report, but it doesn't really give you a whole lot. It's just telling you about past reports, right? What did you learn about past performance? Past performance is not indicative of future returns, right? That's what they always say. So the fact that, ooh, something else did well there means nothing. They're mentioning every big oil company they can find a way to mention in here. However, they're not those big oil companies. They're very tiny. 
Okay, they keep kind of showing what everybody else is doing. And then you get, they bring up Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett recently invested $26.5 billion to get in on the Bakken. Yeah, he did, but he didn't do it with this company, did he? No, not even close. Then you come to the fine print, which in this case is even smaller, isn't it, huh? This is nice. Third-party advertiser. So first you get a notice from the newsletter and the guy behind it. Then you get a, nose, an, a disclosure from the people who are putting it out. By the way, the third party paid $3,640,840 as of June the 7th. By the way, does that date ring a bell with anybody? That's the date of the report that you have from their latest financial stuff. Basically, you know, they made sure they got everything out and then they did it. They paid $3 million to be able to get this thing produced and what have you. And here's what we can tell you. The people behind this, this guy sold his credibility cheaply. Eric Danny's stock prospector has received $20,000 from full service media. So his endorsement only cost $20,000. Toby was on Fox Business. That's why his endorsement cost more, right? In compensation for this advertisement to enhance public awareness of Nordstra Energy, it also expects to receive new subscriber revenue. In other words, people would look at this and want to buy this guy's newsletter. No, no, no. You would hope that people would read this and go, Ugh, I would never, ever buy this guy's newsletter and do nothing with him. And it goes on to talk about it there. What did you find in the, 10, in the 10K that might make you nervous? I know that you guys found risk factors. Now, I will tell you that risk factors, I will now take the other side. I will now be the guy selling this. You're right. We have risk factors, but A, every investment has risk factors, and every investment has to list their risk factors in their 10K. So although we have pages and pages of risk factors, we're not that bad. You know, you could go find Marathon Oil, the big oil company that's mentioned. They would have risk factors. <laughs> Thank you for answering. That's the right question. And no, I can't duck that one. And he had it as well. He, he, they didn't just have risk factors. They had a going concern factor. However, here's what I will tell you. And this is what Toby Smith told me about the other company. Come on, Chuck. You know if it's a penny stock, pretty much every penny stock has going concern factors. You can find company, plenty of companies that are trading at great values today that once had going concern values. That's right. You can also find some sort of a stock graveyard of a whole bunch of dead issues where they had going concern issues and they're not going anymore. Going concern issues are a significant problem. If you look at revenues, right? Revenues, almost nothing. Profits, nothing. They haven't earned any money. And you start to look at what the company does and you go, wait, I had this glorious sales pitch. That's 20 pages. 20 pages. Now, you think if I gave somebody in Ukraine who's interested in stocks a pitch like that about a domestic company using, say, oil, right? Something that you guys understand and you appreciate as a resource. And the pitch is, famous U.S. investor, I've come over here, you're now using me, and I have uh, found you know, this Ukraine stock. It's listed on the market Chuck's been to Kiev one other time. I can tell you of all the Kiev stocks I've ever heard of, since I haven't heard of any, right? This is the most impressive. It's the most impressive. It's going to be able to take oil, one of your most precious resources, find a way to make it that even though the United States soon expects to be energy independent, they can't produce it cheaply enough as you'll be able to produce it here with this company if it goes well. All you need to do is make sure that I have enough funds to keep going and our profits in the end could be astronomical. We could be the Exxon Mobil of Ukraine. And all it's going to take is a couple of dollars a share. How are you feeling? I haven't gotten yet? No. But that's because you're skeptical. That's because you're skeptical. Thank goodness you're skeptical. That's because you've been sitting here with me saying, if your mother says she loves you, check it out. How many folks do you think maybe I could sell somebody with a pitch like that? As much as you'd like to believe you're skeptical, 
we could maybe earn much bigger returns. We have an ability to diversify. You're not that comfortable with the bank. Okay, it's got most of your money, but do you really want to have all of it there? Couldn't we come up with a pitch? And trust me, the devil is always going to be in the details. Even in a loosely regulated group, if they've got to report anything which they will to the stock exchange they are on, you do not ever use somebody else's numbers, and you always look at everything and say, what could go wrong here? Understood? Because if you don't, then you wind up in a situation where you're following blindly some guy's lead. The reason that I wound up writing this story on Tobin Smith was pretty simple. I get things like this in the mail all the time. They are relentless in pursuing me because I have let it be known in 10 years of writing. I, there's a joke that I tell, which is that if you come to the United States and you can't sleep, at some point your favorite or least favorite television will go to infomercials. Do you have infomercials in the Ukraine? Infomercials basically are TV shows that are sort of produced by somebody who has something to sell. So it, it's like, hey, 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 we've got this fabulous diet pill, or we've got this, you know, oh, the insanity workout, right? Oh, you can do the insanity workout. And, we'll have, and it's time that is bought and paid for by the person behind it, right? So there will be, in our country, and maybe someday in yours, you'd have the equivalent of iForex going, you want to learn how to trade Forex? You want to make a little bit more money? Come to the workshop we're going to hold in Kiev. We're going to rent a hotel room, a big hotel meeting room at the Radisson Blue right around the corner in Podil. And we're going to have our guys there. And if you want to learn how to trade foreign exchange, you're going to come and sit through a free meeting. We're going to give you some coffee and tea and, and some snacks in the afternoon. And all you got to do is sign up. And we will allow you to come and learn. And if no obligation, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. So then they'll come in and they'll explain how Forex works, all the stuff we saw on that website, right? All they need, about 2%. If they get 100 people to come, about two of them decide to do it, they can make a business off of that. Now maybe some of those people will be successful traders. That would be awesome. But the vast majority of them won't be. And what I like to say is that in my country, when those meetings come to town, I go to those meetings so that somebody else doesn't have to. I'm the one. I have sat through them on everything from foreign exchange, you betcha, more than once, a couple of stock trading systems, a couple of people that thought they could make money through buying foreclosures, uh, something that was sponsored by Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a couple of trading academies. You can learn how to be a better trader. Yes, you can also learn how to blow. And the other side of this is it's great, right? You saw that they were talking about famous oil companies and what have you. I love going to these things because they'll say, this is how Jim Cramer trades. Do you have any idea who Jim Cramer is? And that will break his heart that you don't know who he is because his ego, he couldn't actually fit in the room if he had to bring his ego with him. Jim Cramer is one of the better known sort of stock talking heads in the United States. He actually started a site called thestreet.com. He was a hedge fund manager who now sort of does a stock show on one of our big financial networks. And he talk, and it's very funny because they'll say, well, this is how Jim Cramer makes his money. Well, that's great. When you say that to me, you know what's different from me and the or ordinary person in the audience? I have Jim on speed dial. I can call Jim anytime I want. So I can call Jim and go, hey, Jim, by the way, there's a guy here. He's talking about how you make money on stocks. And at some point after about 30 seconds of listening to the live presentation, I have to put my phone, I have to turn him off because you can hear him screaming in the background and swearing, you know, that is not how I do anything. Somebody say that I sell stocks like that. No, that is not how we trade. But if he's not in the room and you don't know him, it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? You, as a journalist, have to bring the skepticism that you knew to have on the stuff that I was telling you to virtually everything. It is not that everything is bad. It's not. I don't believe that. I know people who make money in penny stocks, but they're not the average guy. The irony of these things is what happens on these, the people who pay for them, they know, 
hey, we're about to create a rush. Think of it like somebody throwing a big stone in a pool of water. You're going to have a big wave, and then it's going to ripple off, right? Well, as soon as that thing hits, stock price is going to go up from people trying to make sure they get in before whatever else happens. The guy who's paid his money, he sells right then. Okay? I create this big thing, and Petrasonic stock, the one that Toby Smith was talking about, or Nordstra Energy, winds up going up. I sell behind it. Then everybody figures it out, and it comes back down, usually way lower than it was before. Do you know what we call that? That's called pump and dump. I pump up the value of the stock. Then I get other people interested. Once they're interested, I sell. They go off and they lose their money because they're in later. So, I sent you a website. I don't know if anybody looked at it. But we'll look at this one quickly. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Sorry. Yes. Let's see, I think this is it. Oh, no, that's not it. It's, what did I say, inflation.us? Is it inflation.us or inflation.biz? Okay. There we go. This is for the National Inflation Association. Now, if you didn't look at this website, this is the National Inflation Association, and it says it is preparing Americans for hyperinflation. Hyperinflation. What would you consider hyperinflation? Well, I would consider hyperinflation like, you know, you remember the stories of the, of the Weimar Republic? People taking a, a wheelbarrow of money to go buy a loaf of bread? That is hyperinflation. In America right now, we have inflation of less than 1%, roughly 1% overall. We're not anywhere near hyperinflation. But if I want to make you nervous, hyperinflation, fear and greed, right? We talked about it, fear and greed. Let me hit you where it hurts. Fear hurts. So we're going to do this. Now, here's the interesting thing about the NIA. They're talking about is gold at a bottom. They want us to sign up for their newsletter, which is free. If you come over, now if you're preparing Americans for high inflation, you wouldn't really care about whether or not they're making stock picks. But this is their page about, about the organization. And they're cloaking themselves in the flag because if you cloak yourself in the flag, how could you possibly not be good and we're dedicated to preparing Americans for hyperinflation and helping Americans not only survive and prosper in the upcoming hyperinflationary crisis now if that's the case here's the thing over here you see a bunch of stock suggestions and we can go view them all so let's do that we go to view them all and you're gonna see that they say one of their missions is to discover and profile companies that we believe will prosper in an inflationary environment. Of course, they're preparing me for hyperinflation, so I need hyperinflation. And this is a list of companies, and I'm going all the way to the bottom of it, because when they started, they was like 2009, and gold was at a spot where it was a good time to buy gold, and so Barrick Gold, big name company. Silver Wheaton, big name company. Newmont Mining, right? We're going in with big gold companies that everybody knows. You come up, Gold Corp, Royal Gold, all big gold companies, right? Even as you come up, Yamana Gold. You start going up a little further. So they built this up. And what you wind up getting after you come up, oh, about to here. You see this one or PC Gold. See PC Gold? Anybody know what the TSX means? 
The TSX means Toronto Stock Exchange. And it means we just went from big name gold stocks to penny stocks. Now if you're preparing me for hyperinflation and you want me to buy gold, why would you want me to buy this kind of crap? Well, let me explain to you why you would if you were the National Inflation Association. When they say they're about us, they don't actually tell you who they are. But there's two guys behind the National Inflation Association. One is a guy named Jonathan Levid, and the other is a guy named Gerard Adams. Both of them are in the business of promoting stocks. Promoting them how? It's what some people call investor relations. Tobin Smith, with his $50,000 that he got paid, he was doing investor relations. Okay? So Gerard Adams does investor relations, and Jonathan Levitt is now in the investor relations business. I say now because in our country, if you recognize Jonathan Levitt's name, you would know a little bit of trivia. Jonathan Levitt the youngest person ever pursued by the Securities and Exchange Commission for stock fraud. And what he did was pump and dump. Jonathan Levitt would go on websites and he would have all ends of the conversation. He would talk about some great stock. He would build it up. He would have be the next person coming in. Oh, I think you should get in now, blah, blah, blah. It would be the next one and the next one. These fake conversations until you happen to wander in going, I'm trying to get some information about this little penny stock. What do you know about it? And suddenly, now he's got a fish on the line. And he did pump and dumps to the tune of $800,000 in the year that he was turning 17. By the way, when I wrote a piece that talked about him, after he settled with the SEC, and he only gave back about 350, 400,000, his parents were kind of pissed off at me because they thought he was being industrious. Yeah, I thought he was being a criminal, but the SEC didn't actually have the power to prosecute him. They only had the power to try to get the money back, and he didn't have all of it. So that's what they got, and investors who got suckered in got nothing. Okay, so you've got who's behind it, well, when you go and find out who's behind it, you sometimes find amazing things. So you always want to ask those questions. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. If it sounds like you're getting something for nothing, you're usually not getting something for nothing. Okay? And as the person who is doing the investigating, well, you need to recognize that it's a very fine line. So let's see if we can show you how fine that line is. Did anybody go to look? at the Porter Stansbury website that's on there? If you did, I'm very worried. And I'm very worried for a reason. While we are communicating well, the language barrier is there. And Natalia, when she put that in the assignment, edited what I wrote. And I wrote that you should watch this until it starts to make you get sick. And if it doesn't make you sick in the first couple of minutes, you need to turn it off. And the reason for that is that if it doesn't make you sick in the first couple of minutes, you're the one they're targeting. There's an old expression in America that if you go to a poker game and you can't figure out who the dead money is, it's you. Well, if you watch this and this sounds like, hey, I want to invest with this guy, you're the dead money. And I realized, and it was funny because Natalia, I hadn't told her that, and she takes out the read it the until you get sick. The presentation is controversial and may be offensive to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. For some reason, we're not Hello. getting. I named Porter Stansberry. Porter we're not getting the audio with it. I founded Stansberry and Associates Investment Research. It has since become the largest... There's not much. Usually it's just the words that he's saying. ...in financial research and serve hundreds of thousands of paid subscribers in more than 120 countries. You may know of our firm because of the work we did over the last several years, helping investors avoid the big disasters associated with Wall Street's collapse. We warn people to avoid Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, Lehman Brothers, General Motors, and dozens of other companies that have since collapsed. We even helped our subscribers find opportunities to profit from these moves by shorting stocks and buying put options. We 
talked about shorting stocks, put options. Every research firm in the world can match our record of correctly predicting the catastrophe that occurred in 2008 and the rebound that has occurred since then. The video presentation we created three years ago to explain the financial crisis and our thoughts on what would happen next has become the most watched online financial video in history, as far as we can tell. Getting you sick That's yet? That's not why I created this follow-up presentation. Is it making you ill yet? Because I can't stop it. This crisis. Because we believe there is an even bigger <clears throat> crisis lurking, something that will shake the very foundation of America. I know that for most people, the situation seems to be Hang on. better. Stocks have recovered near... And by the way, I would have stopped and put in my own comments as we go along. This is going to be, this would take you about 30 to 35 minutes all to basically get a pitch for his service. But by the way, do you see what just came up? It gave me a chance to buy Steve Suggerud's Daily Wealth, the Inflation Survival Guide. And this is all about Porter Stansbury as well. So this allows you to see more of all the things that they are doing. Oh, it's not letting me do it. I've got to say I want to stay on this page. Hold on. Because when you try to get away from the page, it brings you this. Oh, don't, don't go. Don't go. We've got something important to tell you. So, again, every day at Daily Wealth, we hear messages like this one. I'm worried about all this government spending producing rampant inflation and ruining my savings. And we'll tell you what to do, and for a small fee, etc. Here's the thing. Virtually every one of those claims that Porter Stansbury made in the first 35, 40 seconds of that audio, unsubstantiated and unable to be verified. He says he's in 120 countries. Well, his strategy doesn't really make sense in 120 countries because you in Ukraine could say, oh, Porter Stansbury, he's the smartest guy ever. But you can't actually own a lot of the things that he would be pushing you for. So it seems illogical. I'm not saying that Porter Stansbury is a liar. I'm just saying it doesn't really pass the sniff test. You know the sniff test? What's it smell like? Okay. There comes a point where if it smells like something, there's a pretty good chance. And the more you get that strong odor, you got a pretty good idea of what you're holding in the bag. So whenever you have anything that somebody comes to you with. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. I am, the funny side is, I am willing in my job to give people the benefit of the doubt. Okay? There will be good investment ideas. There are people who have made money in penny stocks. They are very few and far between. People who make money the old-fashioned ways by buying solid businesses that they want to own for a long time, by saying, I believe in the strength of this market and I will hold the whole market for a long time, those people make money. People who trade, you never hear, nobody wants to come to you. You know what, if somebody makes money and does a great trading thing, if you go off and you try iForex and it makes money for you, you'll tell people, hey, I'm doing great. I tried this thing and I'm making good money. If you fail and you lose everything, you won't say a word. That, by the way, is why, if you think this is happening in your community, get your publishers to give you just enough money to open an account for your paper and try this in your blog or wherever you have to. Make it an experiment. Okay? On my old radio show, we had a segment called, We Did It for Science. Right? So, do you have, I know you have a lottery here. Do you have an instant lottery here? Where you can get instant lottery tickets, literally scratch them off, and right? Yeah. Now, if you want to discourage somebody from playing the lottery, about the easiest way possible, especially the scratch-off lottery, go buy 50 tickets. And say, go ahead. By the time they're done scratch, and, and say, here's what I want you to do. I've given you, in our case, it would be $51 tickets. I did this with our intern at our radio show, and then we made a great segment out of it. She had to go buy 50 $1 scratch tickets. And she could not stop playing. She had to play all 50 that we bought. And then she had to keep playing until either she had turned our $50 into $100 or she had lost everything. 
right? You either double your money or you go home with nothing. So on the first $50, after she played $50, she had between tickets and whatever, something like $67. She reinvested all that money into new tickets. So now she buys 67 tickets and she plays them and she got up to about 70 and then she proceeded to lose it all over the course of however many tickets she had. In the end, she had scratched something like 300 tickets, but she turned $50 into nothing, etc. Now, there was a point where she could have quit and made some money. Can I borrow your coin again? So you heard Porter Stansbury say smart things. Okay. So here we go, heads and tails. By the way, last time she gave me 50, this time it's 25, so she obviously trusts me less now. <laughs> um, okay, so here's what I want to do. I've got the people in the back, you're one group. So the people in the back, you're one group. And then you two here are two other groups, and then you three are, are three groups to yourself. I'm going to tell these three groups right here that I can tell you what the coin is going to be, and it's going to be heads. And you three groups, so the group in the back, and you two here, I can tell you what the coin is going to be, and it's going to be tails. It's heads. You three groups. You guys think I'm an idiot. I told you what it was going to be, and I was wrong. You three groups. You four here, I need... One of you over here. So I'm taking you and putting you with this group. Just, for, just sit. It's fine. We're, I don't need you to move. I just need you to know how it works mathematically. I've taken you and put you with these. So you five, I can tell you what this is going to come up next time, and it's going to be heads. You five, I can tell you what it's going to be next time, and it's going to be tails. Heads. So it's you five. Beautiful. Okay. So I've got you two and you three. You two, my next time, it's going to be heads. You three, my next time, it's going to be tails. Tails. You three, I've had three flips of the coin. Okay? You two, it's going to be heads. You, it's going to be tails. Look at how good I'm doing. It's tails. So, Yvonne, you've seen four coin tosses. I've told you the first two were going to be heads, and I told you that the second two were going to be tails. I've been right every time. Want to invest with me? <laughs> okay? If you can't verify a track record, what's to keep somebody from doing that? All I need is a small percentage of people to believe in me and buy. And by the time we finished... You guys are kind of going, really? You got three right in a row. Three out of four is not bad, right? And by the way, what I did there, that was hedging my bets. We talked about hedging, right? Getting my insurance. This group over here, you were my insurance for this group over here. Do you understand how it works? Now you need to understand. Remember, the gambler's fallacy that we talked about earlier, every coin toss is always a 50% chance. I had no idea which they were going to come up. I just played it to make the game my way. Oh, do I have time to do Let me see if I can. I wonder if this website is still around. But if it is, we'll do some magic. Hold on. This website may not be good anymore. I don't know. No, it's not. There are other ways to play those sorts of games. You're always going to be looking for sleight of hand. You're always going to be looking for things that you can or cannot trust. The more you put it together, the better it is. Put together the natural skepticism that we told you about. If your mother says she loves you, check it out. Add that into everything that you're doing. And ultimately, you guys have the right amount of skepticism. Will I tell you, if you go to I4X and look at it in Ukrainian, that you will wind up coming away unimpressed? Nope. You might think it's a great way to make money. You might. Trust me, I know a lot about making money. I look at sites and I look at bad investments all the time and I always am wondering, really, could this be the one? Right? I'm writing 
my kids have asked me, my, daughter, my daughter's asked me at some point to write a story that I told them that I just made up as a bedtime story. But in my case, if you have bedtime stories, you wind up in a situation where you have to put real life and, and things into it. So I made up for them a bedtime story when they were like 9 and 11 that involved a girl who decided to answer, you ever get the emails? You guys may or may not, but the spam emails from somebody who's sort of telling you, hey, you've come into money or I've, I've got this and all I need. You probably don't get them here because they don't want a Ukraine bank account as much as they want the American bank account. But they're basically pitches that are designed to get you to give them your financial number so that they can wind up scamming you, et cetera. And I told them the story about the one that you know, sort of turned out to be real. Now, do I believe that? No, I don't believe that there could be one of those that's real. But as my kids point out, you always say. So, yeah, the problem is there's always a shred of believability. And you need to know if it's a shred or if it's more. And you need to understand that track records are made. You want to be able to make them independent. Okay? Do I believe that everything that Porter Stansbury does is wrong or horrible? No. But I will tell you that you don't need to be a brilliant investigative journalist. Oh, really? I just spelled Google wrong. You don't need to be a brilliant investigative journalist to see what happens here. Before I can finish typing Porter Stansbury, his name, Porter Stansbury scam comes up. That means people are looking and worrying about it. By the way, Porter Stansbury actually has been trying to sponsor my radio show. We would allow it. My producers would allow it as long as we didn't have ads. He wants to buy ads where he'd have me talking about it. And I said, I'll do it the minute I can prove you can prove to me that you are Porter Stansbury. Porter Stansbury got in trouble with the SEC for basically lying about who he was and doing interviews that he said were some guy and Porter Stansbury, but they were Porter Stansbury. That's why he has that video now, because now he doesn't have to do the embarrassing thing like, hey, Porter, what do you think of this? Well, what I think is happening is he doesn't have to do that anymore. He can just do it all on his own. Those kinds of things. When you start, I, I'm amazed at how often I can go and say, oh, let's take it. I mean, let's see if we can find another one. Okay, so Nordstra Energy, right, starts to come up. Oh, there you go. Nordstra Energy Suspension. Nordstra Energy SEC suspension. Should we see? That's the stock that you guys were looking at, right? Let's see what Nordstra Energy suspension brings up for us. Oh, Nordstra Energy addresses market activity and trading suspension. Done July the 1st. And if you read the story, and I didn't actually know that this existed, that this had come out, remember, we said that the thing was dated around June the 7th. It seeks to address recent stock promotional activity. It has come to the company's attention that recently certain parties unrelated to the company have been promoting our company stock. Now this, by the way, can be true. Okay? When we talk about somebody paying for stock promotion, it's not always the stock involved. This can be very true. So you can have a company... Like, let's say that we, let's go the other way. We talked about a Ukraine stock. I was trying to pitch you my Ukraine oil stock, right? So let's go the other way. I'm trying to pitch it to you, but I'm not with the Ukraine oil stock. I went and I bought a million shares of the Ukraine oil stock on the open market. So now, or you went and bought a million shares of Ukraine oil, but you came to me because I'm such a good salesman. And I said, Chuck, you can have a half a million dollars if you basically can help me sell my million dollars of stock. So now I've got half a million. I've got a million dollars in shares to work with. I now pitch you and everybody else. If I wind up getting it sold, then away we go. Okay? It doesn't have to be the company involved, etc. 
And then they talk about the fact that, oh, by the way, the SEC issued a temporary suspension on the trading of the stock. That's in a market that's controlled. You're not in a market that's controlled. Always, always, always take a look. Always have your guard up.